Good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of the award-winning second season of Raising the NASBAR. I'm Jeff Lasky, the CEO of this great organization, the North Shore Barrington Association of Realtors. I hope you are continuing to stay safe and healthy. While I've been messing around in realtor world for more than a couple of decades, I'm still occasionally surprised by what I experience. It happens to all of us. One of the things I did not have a lot of direct contact with during my years in the MLS end of things was the amount of time and resources Illinois Realtors and the local associations, NASBAR included, dedicate to government affairs. It is a time-intensive, relationship-driven process. My producer, Bradley Laborman, and I thought it would be a great idea to have someone on Raising the NASBAR who could inform me and our members about what is involved in this effort and catch us up on some of the local initiatives and candidates of importance for us all to know about. Who better than the star of NASBAR's GADCast, our Government Affairs Director, Joe Roth, to educate and inform us. Welcome, Joe. Jeff, thanks for having me. It's good to be on this side of the podcast for a change. And it is my pleasure to have you as a guest on, on Raising the NASBAR today. Uh, I wanted to do this in a different vehicle than our GADcasts, as I was hoping to appeal to our membership in general, and, and, and not just you know those who really dig into the politics, right? So I'm really glad you could carve out a few minutes uh, in your crazy schedule to uh, to sit down with us. So before before we talk about that schedule of the years, I'd like to give our listeners just a little bit of background. Uh, and everybody hears, you know, government affairs director, here's GAD, stuff like that. So let's just start right there. And, and maybe you could tell us what is a government affairs director? No, that's, that's a great place to start, Jeff. Um, you know, one of the things I love working one of the reasons I love working in the realtor community is that this profession is, is kind of unique in that there is a significant impact from every level of government on this industry. Uh, mm -hmm. Realtors and their clients kind of feel that impact from national policies to state and local policies. And so my job as a government affairs director is to be your advocate. I, I'm a realtor advocate and my job is to represent your interests and the clients you serve. I gotcha. So in a, in a big picture way, let's go there. You know, what would you say are like the big rocks that you deal with that, that you do? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. And, um, you know, of course we, we do a lot of different things, right? So, I mean, I also support our state house lobbying team in Springfield as they need it, but, uh, on local issues, I'm dealing with policies that are going to impact um, impact the transactions, things like real estate transfer taxes. Mm. Uh, if they are a, um, either it's an admission fee, you know, kind of you got to pay the tax before you can come into town, or it's going to be, you know, kind of a, before you leave town, let us take a little bit of that equity from you. Mm -hmm. um, either way, it's an inappropriate tax and something we fight against. Uh, we also look at things like what kind of authority the government has. Uh, we often talk about this as home rule, which is policies that essentially allow unlimited taxing authority and regulatory authority from a local government. Obviously something we oppose. Uh, one of the big issues we deal with lately is affordable housing. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit more, but um, you know, affordable housing is something that I think we all support because it's this huge umbrella term, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important to embrace, though, not all affordable housing policies are created equal. And so we have an interest to ensure that any sort of affordable housing requirements out of a municipality are, uh, are, set, in, are set to be fair, um, fairly distribute the costs of that, and to make sure that it's not uh, negatively impacting the housing market or development opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I just want to say, put together the tapestry here, so to speak. So, the reason I think that this works so well is because it is a coordinated effort between really, and I say mostly it's the state and the local associations, because that's what's really impacting us. 
um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. But obviously, the National Association of Realtors, you know, is involved as well. But that's a fair thing to say, right? Obviously, because you you work for Illinois Realtors as well as being our government affairs director. So uh, you guys aren't doing stuff that that works against each other's interests. Obviously, it's all a, it's all pulling on the rope in the same direction. Absolutely, that's absolutely fair assessment. Um, and I think it is, we all work together. You know, I think we're all in this together and we're supporting the same people. And, and that is realtors and their clients. And, um, you know, I think it's having consistent policies and being able to leverage the resources available at kind of a statewide level is really gives us a big advantage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How does all of this stuff that you're talking about translate to a day-to-day, -day, when I say your day-to-day -day existence, mm -hmm. uh, because I know uh, I carve out, you know, one, one time a week, right? You and I carve out a time where at least we talk yeah. to each other so we know what's going on, right? But, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I know it's, it's just crazy how you're running around. So give us a little bit of a picture of what that is. Uh, uh, you know, for when I say not just yourself, you know, a lot of the other GADs and what they do as well. So if you could yeah. just give us an idea. Yeah. I, so, and again, it's kind of one of the things I love about this role because every day is kind of unique, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I, I spend a lot of time reviewing local policies and municipal agendas. Uh, so the assigned jurisdiction I have is, uh, includes 63 individual municipalities plus the Lake County Board. Um, so I, I'm constantly monitoring the different discussions they have that impact um, you know, things that will either impact home sales, uh, commercial properties, um, you know, generally that transactional is my, my first level I look at. Uh, but we look at those things right now, um, because we're coming into a municipal election, um, spending a lot of time talking with municipal candidates, uh, throughout the region, people that are running for mayor, city council, trustee, uh, we, we're talking to a lot of them. We, the Government and Political Issues Committee has vetted several to be considered for uh, RPAC support. And, and we do have several of those that we will be supporting with uh, RPAC. So we're doing a lot of talks with uh, many, many local elected officials. So that's kind of seasonally right now, that's where I'm at a lot is uh, getting ready for these municipal elections. Now, uh, and I want to circle back for just a second, because you started talking about all the reviewing of all the agendas and all the proposed legislation, things like that, that comes down the pipe. So just want to be clear that you're not sitting around waiting for somebody to tell you, hey, Joe, you need to take a look at something that's really kind of up to you to find that stuff and make everybody else within Illinois Realtors, NASBAR, et cetera, aware that, hey, there may be an issue here. Uh, examples that pop into mind might be Northbrook or Glenview mm -hmm. now, stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's um, that's absolutely true. Uh, I actively seek out these things, but I also look at in in the relationships I have with elected officials and municipal staff, kind of getting ahead of those issues before they're on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you no, know, you can't know. You know, you can't be ahead of every issue, of course, but. Um, we, we do our best to make sure that we stay ahead of the curve. And, uh, you know, one of the things we try to do is if there's a bad idea coming and we're hearing about it early, our hope is to just keep it off the agenda um, mm. and, and kind of kill it before it makes it there. Um, not always possible, but definitely one of those things we try to do. Uh, but I also do hear about issues from, from members. Um, you know, I always encourage our members, if you have something going on that just doesn't sound right, something that's a real pain for you that you're dealing with, whatever that is, give me a call, email, text, whatever it is, let me know what's going on. Um, we might be working on something to address it, or, you know, I might not know about it. I, am, I might not have that knowledge and, you know, I can work on doing something to improve that situation. Okay, now, so you mentioned, so, okay, certainly uh, legislation on a municipal level. You also mentioned uh, a little bit ago the municipal elections. Okay, so yeah. I'm just throw out a hypo, a hypothetical to you. I'm Jeff the realtor, right? And I'd like to know why we spend time on municipal elections. How does that affect real estate professionals? That's a great question, Jeff. And I, I 
it all comes back to, you know, the, that daily life that a realtor has in, in supporting your clients. The municipalities are the ones that create the rules that impact the, the day-to-day life of a realtor, right? Are we going to have to deal with municipal pre-sale inspections? That's something we often deal with, right? And that's something that we fight against. Uh, not to say it's not a, you know, buyer's inspections are a great thing, a great tool that many use. Uh, these are additional inspections. And I've seen some municipalities that will stop a transaction from happening if you don't remedy whatever issues they came up with mm-hmm. uh, and remedy them before closing. So, you know, there's there's issues like that. The transfer taxes are another one. Um affordable housing policies. I keep coming back to that because I see it so much lately. Um, You know, different uh, policies impacting rentals. You know, those are all decided at the local level. Zoning, you know, building codes, all of those pieces that impact the housing market and on, on a bigger scale and on a smaller scale, they impact the individual transactions. And so those are municipal policies and we need to be talking to those policymakers to make sure that our interests are represented in in those discussions. Mm-hmm. Are there any of these like current local issues right now that are that are really resonating that are of particular relevance to to NASBAR members? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and as you'd mentioned, we just went through this in Northbrook. Uh, mm-hmm. We spent eighteen months on uh, affordable housing policies in Northbrook, uh, Glenview, uh, just on Monday evening announced uh, or had held an affordable housing workshop, which is essentially the start of the process for reviewing and potentially changing affordable housing policies. Now, again, these not all of these policies are created equal. Affordable housing is great because it's a big umbrella term that encompasses everything. But uh, the reality is, is that sometimes municipalities want to take shortcuts and just you know, put price controls on a number of units from a new development, um, you know, or, or processes like that. Well, that, that has a negative impact on the bigger housing market, and it makes that community less, less attractive to develop it. So I, I think stagnation is bad, right? So we want to promote policies that, you know, are, are pro-growth and not, uh, you know, not leading to stagnation. So very detailed policy, but something that we are going to work through and represent realtor interests on. Uh, One other I'll I'll highlight real quick. Um, This recently uh, was delayed, but uh, the village of Glencoe has been talking about home rule authority. So this would be a referendum to voters asking for basically uh, asking for a municipal blank check. Um, It would give the give the village board near unlimited authority to create new regulations. And uh, the biggest issue, it would eliminate things like property tax caps, which are in place. Right now, as a non-home rule community, uh, they're limited as to how much they can increase their property tax levy every year. This would eliminate those caps. Um, So there's a number of, of bad things that go along with home rule. And uh, luckily, we were, get, we were able to get them to table the conversations. Uh, so we'll not see that referendum in the April election. But they are likely to revisit the subject uh, prior to the 2022 elections. It sounds to me like in all the work that you do, you must create relationships, right, locally with all these municipalities. That has to be. Of, of real value to you, whether or not these people end up agreeing with you on stuff, right? I mean, you work with these absolutely, time, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and I think that's you know, the, there's always um, when we build those relationships, I think it benefits all of us. But I will say as well, you know, a lot of times I I talk with the realtors that uh, say, oh, I kn- I know somebody over on the village board, right? I know I have a former client that's the city manager or whatever it is, right? Um, Oftentimes realtors help me out a ton in these processes and they're a huge asset. You know, members are a huge asset in this process. Well, and you've you've led right into what I was thinking about asking you next, because it doesn't, I mean, as, as much of this work as you do, 
by yourself and, and doing the grind, right? Getting out there and doing that stuff. This isn't the kind of thing that you just handle all of this on your own, right? You, you work with realtors to get this work done. Specifically, a lot of our own NASBAR realtors help you out. Absolutely. I, um, anytime I have an issue, um, I probably know a realtor in that community that I'm going to talk to as soon as the issue comes up. Um, you know, and I have an issue in, in Lincolnwood, for example, I'm going to call Don Galfand, our government political issues chair, and uh, say, you know, hey, Don, here's what I'm seeing in Lincolnwood. What's what's going on now with Don? Chances are he knows more of the story than I do already, so he can just educate me. But, um, you know, I, and a lot of times, too, realtors are the elected officials themselves mm. and they um uh, they have a, a role in the local government that um, I can be of support to them and say, oh, let me get you some some research on these policies or some information that might help in making the decisions in a realtor friendly way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and those elected officials that happen to be realtors often, you know, in our neck of the woods, it's, there'll be NASBAR members mm -hmm. that support you're talking about uh, can often come in, you know, terms of making recommendations to RPAC, Illinois, uh, Illinois Realtors RPAC to help fund their campaigns. We want to support the people that support the issues that are important to us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, and I, I guess the other angle I'm looking at here is our realtor members, uh, and I'll ask you, because I don't know how effective it is, but uh, let's say there's an issue in a particular um, suburb, and we have realtors that aren't necessarily elected officials, but are residents of that area, right? And you go to them, and, and does it help to talk to those people, and does it help for them to become involved somehow? Absolutely, it does. I um... I, you know, as a, because first and foremost, you're, you're a constituent of those elected officials. You're a resident. You are the people directly affected by that. And that voice as a resident is important. Uh, but to take it a step further, your knowledge as a realtor is valuable. Um, I don't think we can ever take for granted the, the depth of knowledge about communities that realtors carry with them. Um, that most people don't have. Most people don't have the depth of knowledge about communities that realtors do. And so it adds a level of credibility to what you're saying, um, just by the nature of what you do every day. And so that voice is always very powerful. And I, it's, um, I know I worked with realtors in, um, in Glencoe recently on these home rule issues and their voice resonated very strongly. And, you know, for me, it, it makes my life a little easier when realtors and residents are reinforcing that message because then it, it starts to get their attention like, oh, okay, this isn't just one off. This is something we really need to examine a little further. So very, very valuable thing. Well, and aside from you reaching out, let's say an issue comes up somewhere and, and you go and identify and, and talk to those people, I know that there are committees, there's task forces that you actually participate on. So we'll focus on, on NASBAR and, and I'll ask you what committees, what task forces at NASBAR do members participate in that you work with as well that really impact upon this work? Yeah, and the most direct fit is the Government and Political Issues Committee, um, chaired by, again, Don Gelfand. Uh, we love Don, uh, but he's um, he chairs our committee. I believe 21 members are currently on the committee. We meet uh, five, six times a year, but have informal conversations much more often. Um, and we get together and we discuss a lot of different issues. Number one, we discuss what are the policy things happening around the communities, right? What are the conversations? We have a, a geographic diversity of, of members there. So it's not everyone's in one town. Um, and everyone there is paying attention to what's happening in those communities and have, have valuable insights in the process um, you know, as we discuss those issues and how we can best tackle those things. Uh, in addition, you know, we talk about RPAC and we talk about the candidates that are running. 
So we talk about the policy side and we talk about the, you know, the, the more political side of it, which who's running for office and how can we evaluate these people to determine who's, who's going to be the, the champion for realtors and homeowners. And, and, and so people will normally hear that referred to as GPIC, right? So yeah. that's where people will hear that. I know that there's a subcommittee of GPIC, right, that you formed, uh, an RPAC subcommittee. They really focus on our efforts to make people aware of what RPAC's doing and how they can contribute, I'm sorry, invest in RPAC to, you know, uh, uh, to help that along, right? So. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, um, J.B. Gordon's chairing that subcommittee for us. And again, looking at, you know, how do we, how do we help members understand what RPAC is and what's the value of it? Um, a very, very uh, big undertaking, but uh, very worthwhile because I think RPAC's a, a strong, uh, a strong part of our advocacy uh, programming. Well, I've got a question about, about RPAC, though, because I get this question a lot from members, not a lot, I should say, um, but there will occasionally be to, be, to be completely transparent, there will be members that will say to me, hey, Jeff, I don't agree with who our PAC, uh, with, and it's usually not candidates so much as I hear about a specific issue, and, and people will say, uh, people, members of ours will say, hey, Jeff, why, why should I support our PAC if they're, you know, on, on not necessarily the different side of an issue, but they not, you know, they're not committed against it or for it. They may be neutral on the issue. Uh, so there's not a consistency with that realtor's position. Uh, and, and what do you say to people like that, that, you know, that there's still uh, a real value to investing in our PAC, even if you don't agree with them all the time? Yeah, that's fair. And I think that's, you know, uh, getting 100% uh, agreement among many thousands of people, I don't think is ever an option. Um, but I, I would first encourage them to engage. Um, you know, the, the beautiful thing about RPAC is that this is, this is a realtor tool. And these associations are realtor associations. Um, when we talk about supporting candidates, for example, um, those decisions are made by committees of realtors. Uh, those candidates are vetted by committees of realtors. And when we talk about these, you know, different issues and positions, you know, those things are again determined by realtors. And, and so I encourage them to engage um, and also looking at the big picture of this um, because consistently you can look at a lot of RPAC, uh, you know, how RPAC has supported our industry. And I think you'll, you'll find the value proposition right there. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at you know, the, the strength of RPAC and what we're able to achieve through you know, fighting bad policies. And you know, even looking at things like uh, one of the, the big things we talked about several years ago now, but you know, advertising taxes, right? You know, those were, RPAC was a big help in stopping things like realtor advertising taxes and things like that. So I think there's there's always a lot to it. And I would always recommend them, let's engage in the conversation a little bit more before we just decide to brush this off. Yeah, I think too that, and, and when I say my conversations have, have focused on, uh, you want to invest in and support an, uh, a, an organization or a group that is protecting real estate, protecting private property rights, even if there's, Sometimes, and it's it, it really isn't often. I, I know people want to, I, you know, there's a an urge to exaggerate sometimes. Uh, it's not often, but there are occasions where there may be some disagreement. But most of the time, we're all in agreement that we don't want to have these, uh, you know, transfer taxes, you know, uh, in these individual municipalities uh, at all, let alone mm -hmm. get raised. We're all against property taxes, you know, stuff like that. It's fairly straightforward, and it's nice to have a, a, a strong and influential voice that can protect our interests. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I again, I look to, you know, supporting those candidates that support us. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I know you let our members know about what's going on 
and uh, and there's always you're always contributing to our weekly e-newsletters, and obviously you do your GAD casts. Uh, are there any other resources that our members could consult to stay on top of things? Yeah, well, there's and there's a lot of resources out there, and there's a lot of a lot of things to stay uh, on top of. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't um, reinforce the value of our calls for action as mm. well and, and making sure that you follow along those things. Now, that's not a regular thing, right? You know, I think maybe maybe if we do four in a year, that's a pretty busy year for us. But um, those calls for action, again, about that, getting that realtor voice in front of your elected officials, critical importance on issues that are very important. Um, best way to do that is sign up for the mobile alerts. So that way you can get a text message on it. You can read about it when you have time and it's in your text messages. Um, and it lets you very easily respond to that. Uh, just have to text the word realtors to the number 30644. That's 30644. So I'm hoping we get at least one or two people to pull out their cell phones right now. Um, but that's, a, that's one easy way. Um, you know, and again, engaging with uh, with our committees and processes, you know, that's another easy way. I think GPIC, we might meet six times this year, maybe it's five. I'd have to look at the calendar, I guess. But, uh, you know, th that's a committee that come hang out, come to one of our committee meetings and see what you think. If it's something you want to participate in regularly, that's great. Let me know. Um, and also just email, pick up the phone, call me, you know, whatever it is. If you've got something that you know about or something you want to learn about, let me know. Really good. And that's at joe at nasbar.org. That's real easy. That's really pretty cool. easy. You know what? And that's what's that's what's nice about having Jeff, for instance. Jeff at nasbar.org is a really short and easy uh, email to, re to remember. So is there anything else you'd like to let our audience know about while, while you have their attention? Um, you know, I think that we've covered our big bases here. Um, Check out our next GADcast. We're going to be uh, interviewing some of those uh, municipal candidates coming up over the next couple months here. Uh, we're going to be putting out some interviews with uh, some of these candidates that we're supporting. So it'll be a great, uh, great chance to learn more about some of these individuals. All right, brother. I appreciate it again. Thanks for spending this time with us. I think that uh, even the most uh, yeah, the busiest of members who, who don't really get a chance to participate in this stuff could take a few minutes and, and get a better understanding of the value uh, that you bring to our association and in general, the value of government affairs and our PAC uh, to what it is that we do as an association. Well, thank you, Jeff. That's a wrap. Please keep an eye on NASBAR Communications to stay current on NASBAR happenings and to know when one of our great podcasts is coming up. Thank you, Bradley Laborman, for the great job running the board. And thanks to you for tuning in to Raising the NASBAR. I very much appreciate it. Please stay safe and let's hold out a little while longer to beat this pandemic. Talk to you soon. Music.